One of the really interesting things early in the book is that you point out that the church teaching against racism and the, the church teaching on um, the equal dignity of all men before God, it's not based on the fact that we lack sci strong scientific evidence for racial superiority or inferiority. I mean, that, that would right. be the case, but that's not why the church uh, says racism is wrong. It's yes. actually something more fundamental as a spiritual principle. So Absol what is that? Yeah, absolutely. So that's a very crucial point. The church's condemnation of racism does not stand or fall with this or that argument in biology. And people seem to think that, well, if you're opposed to racism, then you have to sort of, you know, worry about whether someone's going to give some kind of uh, biological argument for the superiority or inferiority of this this or that race. The, the, from the church's point of view, all that stuff's irrelevant because the condemnation of racism goes much deeper than anything that's grounded in biology. It, it's grounded in uh, the nature of human beings, first of all, as rational creatures. We have rationality and in, in um, traditional Catholic philosophy, in Thomistic philosophy, for example, um, and not just in not just for Thomas, but for uh, Catholic philosophers in general, our intellects, our, our rationality is an immaterial aspect of our nature. It transcends uh, our material bodily capacities. And it's the highest mm -hmm. power of the human soul that God has to specially create in each new human being. And um, so one pillar of the equality of all human beings before God as having equal rights, equal dignity, whatever race they are, is that we all have immaterial souls, rational souls, to use the the, philo the Thomistic philosophical jargon. And that's something that uh, we know through philosophical argumentation, as well as through the church's divinely revealed teaching. And so it's something that uh, biological science uh, cannot establish, but also cannot undermine. It's, it's, it's grounded in something deeper than anything that science can tell us. It's, it's grounded in deeper philosophical and metaphysical truths about human nature. And it's also grounded, the, the church's condemnation of, of racism, not only in our human nature, but on the fact that all human beings are also called to grace, that we are, um, the door is open to all of us to the beatific vision and to redemption from sin and so forth. That's true in the teaching of St. Paul and the church more generally of all human beings of whatever ethnicity, whatever race, what have you. And that, once again, is something that has nothing to do with this or that finding of science. And so it cannot be undermined by any finding of science. It goes deeper than that. Right. And the same the same is true of, uh, you know, what what we're more likely to find is that not all not all cultures are equal. You know, uh, we, we can pretty much say, like, science doesn't give us evidence that that, uh, you know, there's significant differences between people of different, you know, uh, ethnic, uh, biologically, you know, racial, biological backgrounds. Um, I mean, there might be certain things about you're more susceptible to being lactose intolerant or things, but n n things like that, but nothing, nothing really sig morally significant, you know, um, right. they have nothing to do and, with our, uh, our basic rights and, and, and right. Exactly. Yeah. But, but we will find that, um, we will find that, you know, not all cultures are equal and there there are wide divergences between cultures at least in this or that respect and sometimes just sort of on the whole and it's important that the church is also not saying um that you know the position against racism stands or falls based on your evaluation of the the, the merits of different cultures Right. You know, so, uh, because the church outright says not all cultures are equal, right. certainly not in every respect. Right. And so right. th that cuts people out, off at the pass. And I see many, you know, Catholic anti-racists saying this, where if you criticize a, a particular culture, ethnic culture at all, you are immediate. That's immediate evidence that you're that you're racist. You know, like if I were to criticize, you know, rap music as degenerate, that would be immediate evidence that I'm racist to many people. You know, well, but we spent 50, we just spent 15 minutes talking about how great Thelonious Monk is. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, uh, well, the, I mean, the idea that, that, that the idea that all the idea that the idea that all cultures are equal in every respect is somehow contrary to Catholicism is refuted very easily just by opening up scripture, say, right? I mean, you find throughout scripture condemnations of right. ancient cultures as, uh, um, uh, as uh, lost in degeneracy, as uh, 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 beholden to idolatry, and in, in all kinds of other ways, 
as defective and as um, in need of redemption and so forth. And, you know, obviously you see this in the Old Testament uh, where, uh, you know, scripture uh, condemns the, the culture surrounding ancient Israel and tells the Israelites to avoid the idolatry and immoral practices and so forth that are practiced in these other cultures. You find it in uh, St. Paul's epistle to the Romans where he condemns the pagan cultures of his day and so forth. So obviously, well, those were human cultures and yet they're criticized by scripture. They're not criticized on any sort of biological or racial or ethnic grounds. They're criticized on cultural grounds. They're criticized because right. they reflected false values and so forth. And then, uh, you know, throughout the history of the church, uh, the church has also uh, always consistently condemned the idea that, say, every religion is equally good and praiseworthy. And uh, maybe the most right. famous recent example of that was the uh, two, the 2000, year 2000 uh, doctrinal statement, uh, Dominus Jesus, where uh, Cardinal Ratzinger writing uh, for uh, Pope John Paul II under the authority of Pope John Paul II reaffirms the, the church's uh, traditional teaching that it's only through Christ and through the church that human beings are saved and so forth. And so that other, I think the language it's used is that other uh, other Christian bodies are in a, um, a gravely deficient situation, lacking certain important truths and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. Well, that obviously implies that from a theological point of view, not every culture or not every worldview is equally good and so forth. And it's interesting that the, you know, the people who make this claim, they say, well, if you say that every culture is equally, if, if you say not every culture is equally good, that somehow that's racist. At least of this very same people who out of the other side of their mouth say that there's this thing called whiteness and uh, whiteness is some property that all white people are somehow born into. And if you believe, say, Robin DiAngelo, it's inherently racist. It's inherently hostile to uh, blacks and people of color. And it represents an imp oppressive point of view that uh, whites have imbibed without even realizing it. And it manifests itself in microaggressions and implicit bias and all these sort of magical, uh, invisible ways of being racist, allegedly, and so forth. But wait a sec, now you're denigrating an entire culture. And yet you just said that we have to treat all cultures as somehow equally good. Uh, and if we don't, it's racist. It's one of many incoherences in this uh, so-called anti-racist position uh, that's represented by critical race theory right. and, and its popularizers like D'Angelo and Kendi.